one thing common between both of us now, both of us don't know what I'm going to speak. <laughs> as unprepared as you were for your board examination. I was praying to God, my name shouldn't come when she picked it up, but unfortunately it came. It was like putting the rock of Gibraltar on my head. My heart started beating fast. Adrenaline started rushing. I'm breathing fast. My lips are dry. And my throat is choking. I could see the cocoon breaking, the butterflies in the stomach. And I have liquidity problem in my kidneys. When a man stands up to speak, the mind sits down. Good morning, everybody. Today, my topic is going to be, take a guess. How to overcome uh, stress, stress. and nervousness, fear, public speaking. Public, public, public speaking. speaking. You are great trainers, I am well aware of it, but tomorrow you are going to become good public speakers, they are going to hire you to speak to thousands and thousands of people. Are you prepared for that? Yes, Joshua, what is the biggest audience you would have delivered? 50. So how are you prepared for 1500? Not prepared. Not well prepared? Okay, Kanan sir, all the employees in your office, you are going to go give a motivational speech. Okay. Are we ready? I am not ready. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which I am addressing it is a key note taken by the employee. Okay. Okay. So I have to discuss with the people. Mm -hmm. For many things you have discussed and they have to open the note. Okay. Okay. That's great. So this is what today's topic is all about. How to become a great motivational public speaker. Who are the great speakers? Who connect with the audience. I, I'm talking about the legends who spoke well. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Wonderful. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Huh? Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Somebody who, yeah, probably he did it, but he did it in a notorious manner. Gandhi. Obama. Gandhi ji. Shivkera. Beautiful things. Shivkera. Another amazing name. Padmashi, I missed Obama. You. Obama. Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi. What are the great speeches? I have a dream. Much when the black right. boy and the white boy hold hands together and walk in the streets of America, Martin Luther. Brothers and sisters of America, Vivekananda. Am I right? So, we need to aspire to be one like that. What the benefit that right now goes as a trainer, it's only for a small crowd. Imagine the same thing can be parted to a huge crowd. That's what this public speaking is all about. It has so much of power. It has so much of power. The three things we are going to focus on today is number one, matter. Number two, manner. Number three, grammar. Matter, manner, grammar. It rhymes. So you don't have to worry about that. How my matter has to be, the content has to be, is number one, visualizing. It should help people to visualize. How do you think I can make people visualize my content? As a great speaker. Sudarshan, Sorry? Stories. Wonderful. Stories. N number of stories. We have stories about anything and everything in the internet. Any other ways we can do it? Role plays? Okay. Anything. Any, any other ways? Real life examples. Real life examples. Beautiful. I have this beautiful... There's a guy who does his PhD economics in US and come back to his own country. Bangladesh. He's a professor. He walks around the streets. And he sees a lady selling a lot of wooden furniture, goes and asks, how much do you make? And she says, I'm not making anything. Because the guy who lends money, augury, okay, is, is, is no usurpus. So he takes everything in the form of zuri. And she says, come, let's go to the bank. I'll get you loan. And they go. Bank says, do you have collateral? No? Okay, then get out. And this guy says, if that be the case, I'm going to open my own bank and lend money for all the beggars, vendors and prostitutes and he does that. His name is Mohammed Yunus Grameen Bank and he's a Nobel laureate. Such stories make people visualize. By the time I told Grameen Bank, some bank has come into your mind. When I talked about Mohammed Yunus, you would have seen him, he would have appeared in front of you. When we talked about beggars and other things. So visualization is a very powerful tool through stories. You can put videos and other things that also can help you out. The second thing is humanizing. 
Any idea what's humanizing? Daniela, humanize. How do I humanize with other person? Empathize. Empathize. Emotions, emotional intelligence, that's what we are talking about. You need to connect to these people using empathy and emotions. Again, it can be a storytelling. Again, it can be a video, whatever it might be. So you can connect. The third thing is going to be intellectualizing. This is a very important thing. Statistics, facts, data will tell you that you're an intelligent person, how much you can hold in your memory. It's a beautiful book called Free Economics. Economics. Yes. I, I, I would suggest this book to everybody because Let how it. the author, yeah, live it. Okay, how he handles the data, it's amazing. He compares Chicago school children with sumo fighters. That's really great. Please read the book so you know how to handle data and how to interpret, interpolate data and give it to the audience. The third one is rationalizing. Your messages must be something different. It has to be different. Here we take use of analogy. What's an analogy? A similarity that you draw from an analogy. Wonderful. That's really great. An analogy is great. So you don't directly give a message, people don't take it. Being alone is very dangerous. You're like an hydrogen. You're like an hydrogen. It's seemingly atomic. But if you join a friend called oxygen, you'll become the elixir of like the water. But if you join chlorine and chloride, Acid. You become hydrochloric acid, where do we use it? This is an analogy. Start using a lot of analogy. Enough of analogies are available in the net itself. What's the difference between a diamond and a charcoal? It is pressed. When the charcoal is pressed. Only two things. When you undergo pressure and when you have enough network in your life, you become a diamond, otherwise you become a charcoal. That's the difference. So use a lot of analogies. That's what intellectual, sorry, rationalizing all about. Finally, your sense of humor. Very important thing. But if you tell all jokes, you'll become a stand-up comedian. Be very careful. You have to be very careful about that. Okay, good. Let's come and take a small trial on this. How there's a card I'm gonna give. There's gonna be a small question kind of thing. You need to answer it quickly. Who's willing to? Yes, please. 30 seconds you need to make an impression. I mean impression. We have to choose something. I have to read? Yeah, you can read and then immediately answer it. If you had to choose another occupation, what would it be? Economist. Can okay, explain. The economist is something where uh, he analyzes the demand supply and contributes to the nation for to grow and to give ideas and strategy to grow the nation. Mm -hmm. Can you do it in a visualizing mode for the? you might be doing in a public speaking number one a factual speech where you can connect a lot of data from the internet and then comes the motivation motivational narrative factual opposite opinion to factual is opinion. opinion super opinion. opinion based speeches when you want to take opinion be very careful about that with the audience very sensitive and the third thing is an abstract they want to go suddenly they call you an extempore impromptu speech you tell okay I want you to today speak about money somebody can Quickly. Who's willing to? Yes, quickly. Is it very good 
<laughs> so friends, what happened? So money is like a double-edged sword. You can buy a gun with money and shoot a person, and you can buy you can buy a bun with money, and you can feed a person. So you can get gun and bun with money. So oh, wow. money is really a two-edged sword. Wonderful, wonderful. Give a big applause. See the opener. That's what's called the primacy effect, and how you close is called the recency effect. They remember only this because the human attention span, attention span is decreasing day by day. Your parents probably watched four hours movie. Now you watch one and a half hours movie. They watch test series. You watch one day matches. This is what happening. So keep it short and sweet. How you can make that impact? Suppose I'm supposed to speak about Apple and Apple. What what do I talk about? Can we can we take a random thing? I said Newton. I said Newton. Yes. Apple company. Apple company. An apple a day keeps the doctor in the office. Yeah. Good, keep the apple away. Mm. New York. New York. Okay. Good. Steve Jobs. It's a sin fruit, doesn't it? Never listen to women. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Okay. No offense, please. So you can go on and on. This is how you start practicing for your public speaking sessions. Take a topic and then work on it in front of the mirror. That would be good. The second thing is the manner, your posture, gesture, micro and meta gestures that you give. Already the previous speaker had spoken enough. What I wanted to tell is, number one, keep one on distance with people. It's a very important thing. Why should I do that? Personal space. Yeah, some people speak, some people spray, so it's better to keep away from that. So that's a very important thing. Always people come, you try to hold them and say, come after my speech, yes, I want to give some gap. Please don't do that. Always maintain one of distance. The second thing is incongruent gestures that a lot of people make. And the last time one of the speakers told this gentleman, I accept your point, don't worry. <laughs> so it's telling you, shut up. And some, one of the speakers said, please keep quiet. Please keep quiet. So this is all incongruent thing. And as well as your posture, as soon as you come here, please take the power position, sign straight. This is called the neutral position. And make sure your arms doesn't go beyond your elbow. This is circumference. Otherwise, it will become a convention workshop, miracle workshop. You go, these things, this lot of things happen, coming over there. No, can you avoid that? And the next thing is your grammar, your linguistic intelligence, your language skills. Start polishing on your uh, pronunciations, your vocabulary, and all these aspects that will be better. Now coming, most of the times you say, I forget my speech. That's where mnemonics and mind map by Tony Busan comes into picture. Mind map is a beautiful concept. It structures your speech. My very educated mother just said us nine planets. Any idea? The names of the planets in an order. This is what it happens. So mnemonics and mind map will happen. Now coming to the focus on the audience. Don't assume your audience. One time the law uh, university called me and said, please come and speak. I said, sure, who are the audience? They said, all students. When I went there, all PhD students are sitting. <laughs> I said, again, this is an assume is a problem. Three guys are sitting and speaking in a pub. One guy said, my wife when I was pregnant, when she was pregnant, she read this book called A City of Two Tales, she delivered twins. <laughs> Another guy said, what big deal, my wife when she was pregnant, she read three musketeers, she delivered triplets. Wow, the other day started running, said, why is he running? No, her wife is pregnant and she's reading a book called Alibaba on 40 Tales. <laughs> so you have to be careful about that. So never assume your audience are like this, like this, no. That's where your ego goes up. When you see your audience below your level, you feel, ah, okay, so please kindly don't do that. Okay, superiority complex. The Eureka Food salesman went with the vacuum cleaner and told that lady, see what's going to happen. He spilled a lot of dust and said, I'm going to clean this pick and you know, span. Otherwise, I will lick it and eat it. And the lady asked, would you like to have some sauce? Why? Today, power cut in Tamil Nadu. One whole day, no power. So better be careful about it. Your superior, you might have a very good speech. So don't tell, yes, I can really make it. Please don't do that. Don't underestimate your audience. Don't overestimate them also, it's not necessary. You go do your job. As was rightly said, don't try to impress the audience, express that's more than enough. I had a very nice experience, I was asked to speak. So I went well prepared with Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head above when all about you losing and blaming it on you, then I started that it was not coming. Second time I started it was coming, not coming. Third time I started it was not coming. I feel very embarrassed and then walked and sat. But the next speaker saved me. He told, I like the way was speak. 
how he repeated the first two lines of Rudyard Kipling three times vehemently that made a lot of meaning. So you don't underestimate your speech, you don't underestimate the audience also, that's what I'm saying. So become great speakers, motivate everybody. Some people give happiness wherever they go, some people give happiness whenever they go. So be the person who gives happiness wherever they go as a great public speaker. Thank you so much.